What's up guys, Axis here bringing you all another tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to import your camera from Cinema 4D into After Effects and then we're going to be using a third party plugin called Particular to uh, create some particles in 3D space. So um, first off, um, I'm going to be showing you how to import the uh, the camera. Now you're going to need to put the exchange plugins into your uh, uh, After Effects folder so um, I'll just go ahead and see if I can try and find them. Uh, in my Cinema 4D. So, let's see, exchange plugins, there we go. If you go into program files, max on Cinema 4D and exchange files, you should be presented with all these folders here. We're going to go into After Effects, um, Importer, Windows for, in my case, and I'm going to go for CC. Uh, if you're using a different version of uh, Cinema 4D and you have CC, um, it probably won't have uh, the CC support, so you're probably going to want to get the newest version of Cinema 4D, either 16 or 15, which has support for CC. Uh, but if you're using an older version, um, I think maybe CS4 and stuff would be supported, CS5. Um, so just to be safe, I'm using Cinema 4D R15 to get the CC plugin, and then we're going to copy that uh, with Control C, and then we're going to go into Program Files. Uh, After Effects in Adobe, After Effects, Port Files, and Plugins, and then we can paste this just into the root of the Plugin Files folder. As you can see, I've put it in there already. So once you've got that done, you're going to want to restart After Effects if you've not already. Uh, so I'm just going to close that down anyway. So I'm going to be using something with a lot of camera movements. Um, my Marauder intro, which I just kind of did. Uh, so, how you're going to import this is you're going to go into Render Settings, Save, and in Compositing Project File, you're going to uh, throw that down. And uh, in here, you're supposed to check Save, uh, Relative, Include Timeline Marker, Include 3D Data, and basically just check all of them and then do After Effects, or if you're using Nuke. I don't know how to use Nuke, but no, just, it's there. Uh, and then you'll save that out into the folder that you have your intro in. Uh, so just click save and then you'll save it into your folder. And then also make sure that this is the same location as where your intro is saved. Also, if you've checked this before you start rendering, when you render this out, you'll actually get the uh, the camera file inside this folder here so um yeah now what we're going to want to do is we're going to open up after effects after we've saved that there should be kind of it sh should look like it's kind of not responding for a while and then it should finish doing the little loading thing and that's how you know that it's, it's exported so now we're in after effects we're going to do import and then we're go going to go ahead and import our camera file which should be in the format of AEC after effects format uh, so if you double click on that it's just gonna bring up this one here and then it'll have your uh, your intro here and your um, uh, your composition with your camera in it and these have got two lights if you want to do some element 3d lighting and stuff and using some of the different lights you've added then you can use them but I'm not gonna need to so uh, now that we've got that I've just deleted the lights and kept the camera in there as you can see, we've got this. I'll add some motion blur to it. Uh, this is also a third-party plugin, but this is not necessary. It just makes everything look a lot better. Um, and then we're going to add a background. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it a black one. And now we're going to want to create another solid, and these are going to be our particles. So particular, and as you can see, it's already kind of mapped into the camera. So if I uncheck the camera, you can see that it's going to go back to its original position. So you might want to adjust the position of the particles here by just clicking here, um, and then adjusting the point. There we go. And then we're going to go into emitter point. Uh, and we're going to change it to box there. 
I'm going to go to the start and uh, I'm just going to drag this uh, whole layer forward. So hopefully we should get the particles coming in. So you can see that the particles are kind of not really that visible. What we're going to want to do is increase the emitter size on the X, the Y, and the Z. And um, then I'm going to go into particle and turn up the size. Now you should be able to see the particles here. I'm just going to make them quite big so you guys can actually see what um, is happening. Make sure you drag this uh, and make sure it's filling up the whole composition. And then we'll just scrub through this to make sure that the uh, particles are always in the camera. And you can increase the particle per second if you want more of them in there. I'll just do that. And you can also turn it to life to, see, to um, make them stay in the composition for a bit longer. So I'm just going to turn down size here. And um, if you actually render this out right now, you're gonna well, you can actually see it if you look closely. There's going to be a lot of popping going in and out of the uh, composition. I'm going to increase the Z and turn down the particles. There we go. Uh, so if you actually go through it, you're going to see a lot of them popping in and out. And you're going to be able to fix this by going into your particle and opacity over life. In here, you're gonna have this box. You can create your own kind of weird thing if you want to. But I'm just gonna be doing uh, this preset one that kind of ramps in and then ramps out. So basically, what this is saying is, at birth, it's going to the uh, opacity is just gonna increase from zero to a hundred. It's gonna stay there until after those three seconds or like two point five, and it's gonna fade out to zero. So there's not gonna be any popping or any problems that we had originally. And to add uh, to make this a bit more realistic, we can go into rendering and motion blur, set to comp settings, we'll set it to on, and then we're going to switch up linear to sub frame sample, change levels to 15, and we should get some good motion blur in there too. Now this should follow the camera. Which it is doing. Um, so once we've got this, we can change colors of it. You could add glows. So I'll make it a, I'll make it a goldish yellow kind of color. So there we go. We can see the motion blur on ones like those. So I'm just gonna add a glow. going to turn up the radius. Uh, if you want these to be a bit more harsh, uh, the glow, I mean, you go into project and you can change, you click here where it says 8 bit, change this to 32 bits per channel. And then you're going to get a brighter glow. Uh, this will actually increase the render times and preview times, so if you don't really want that, then you can just uncheck that, well I mean go back to 8-bit or 16 it's just changing up how many colours are in it so as you can see I'm just toggling this on and off and you can see it actually makes quite a big difference and then just to make sure this kind of fades we can uh, add a gradient map to the backgrounds uh, gradient ramp I mean and I'm going to put this on uh, radial I'm going to change the white to a goldish color. And I'm going to swap the colors here uh, so that the is kind of like a fade here. And then I'm going to turn up the scatter slightly and then turn up the blend with the original. So we just kind of have a glowy thing and then we can even move down the black where it is so it's kind of um, more gold in the scene. There we go. So that's uh, basically our scene. Now all we have to do is kind of uh, add some color correction uh, and do some smoke and stuff in here. 
uh, and maybe add some shockwaves and stuff like that. But all in all, that's basically it finished. Now all you can do is just render that out, put it into Premiere uh, Vegas, do some sound on it. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys, and remember to comment some uh, tutorial ideas in the comment section. And we'll see you guys in the next tutorial.